from Matthew Henry's commentary on Matthew 7, 21-23. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils? and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. 1. That it is necessary to our happiness that we do the will of Christ, which is indeed the will of his Father in heaven. The will of God as Christ's Father is his will in the gospel. For there he is made known as the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in him our Father. Now this is his will, that we believe in Christ, that we repent of sin, that we live a holy life, that we love one another. This is his will, even our sanctification. If we comply not with the will of God, we mock Christ in calling him Lord, as those did who put on him a gorgeous robe, and said, Hail, King of the Jews. Saying and doing are two things, often parted in conversation of men. He that said, I go, sir, stirred never a step, but these two things God has joined in his command, and let no man that puts them asunder think to enter into the kingdom of heaven. 2. The hypocrite's plea against the strictness of this law, offering other things in lieu of obedience, verse 22. The plea is supposed to be in that day, that great day, when every man shall appear in his own colors, when the secrets of all hearts shall be manifest, and among the rest, the secret pretenses with which sinners now support their vain hopes. Christ knows the strength of their cause, and it is but weakness. What they now harbor in their bosoms, they will then produce in arrest of judgment to stay the doom, but it will be in vain. They put in their plea with great importunity, Lord, Lord, and with great confidence, appealing to Christ concerning it. Lord, dost thou not know? 1. That we have prophesied in thy name. Yes, it may be so. Balaam and Caiaphas were overruled to prophesy, and Saul was against his will among the prophets. Yet that did not save them. These prophesied in his name, but he did not send them. They only made use of his name to serve a turn. Note. A man may be a preacher, may have gifts for the ministry, and an external call to it, and perhaps some success in it, and yet be a wicked man, may help others to heaven, and yet come short himself. 2. That in thy name we have cast out devils? That may be too. Judas cast out devils, and yet was a son of perdition. Origen says, that in his time, so prevalent was the name of Christ to cast out devils, that sometimes it availed when named by wicked Christians. A man might cast devils out of others, and yet have a devil, nay, be a devil himself. 3. That in thy name we have done many wonderful works. There may be a faith of miracles, where there is no justifying faith, None of that faith which works by love and obedience. Gifts of tongues and healing would recommend men to the world, but it is real holiness or sanctification that is accepted of God. Grace and love are a more excellent way than removing mountains, or speaking with the tongues of men and of angels. 1 Corinthians 13 verses 1 and 2 Grace will bring a man to heaven without working miracles, but working miracles will never bring a man to heaven without grace. Observe, 
that which their heart was upon in doing these works, and which they confided in was the wonderfulness of them. Simon Magus wondered at the miracles, Acts 8, 13, and therefore would give any money for power to do the like. Observe. They had not many good works to plead. They could not pretend to have done many gracious works of piety and charity. One such would have passed better in their account than many wonderful works, which availed not at all while they persisted in disobedience. Miracles have now ceased, and with them this plea. But do not carnal hearts still encourage themselves in their groundless hopes with the like vain supports? They think they shall go to heaven because they have been of good repute among professors of religion, have kept fasts and given alms, and have been preferred in the church, as if this would atone for their reigning pride, worldliness, and sensuality, and want of love to God and man. Bethel is their confidence, Jeremiah 48, 13. They are haughty because of the holy mountain, Zephaniah 3, 11, and boast that they are the temple of the Lord, Jeremiah 7, 4. Let us take heed of resting in external privileges and performances, lest we deceive ourselves and perish eternally, as multitudes do, with a lie in our right hand. 3. The rejection of this plea as frivolous, the same that is the lawmaker, verse 21, is here the judge according to that law, verse 23, and he will overrule the plea, will overrule it publicly, he will profess to them with all possible solemnity, as sentence is passed by the judge. I never knew you, and therefore depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Observe, one, why and upon what ground he rejects them and their plea, because they were workers for iniquity. Note, it is possible for men to have a great name for piety, and yet to be workers of iniquity and those that are so will receive the greater damnation. Secret haunts of sin, kept under the cloak of a visible profession, will be the ruin of hypocrites. Living in known sin nullifies men's pretensions, be they ever so specious. 2. How it is expressed, I never knew you. Quote, I never owned you as my servants. No. Not when you prophesied in my name, when you were in the height of your profession and were most extolled." Unquote. This intimates that if he had ever known them, as the Lord knows them that are his, had ever owned them and loved them as his, he would have known them and owned them and loved them to the end. But he never did know them, for he always knew them to be hypocrites and rotten at heart as he did Judas. Therefore, says he, depart from me. Has Christ need of such guests? When he came in the flesh, he called sinners to him. But when he shall come again in glory, he will drive sinners from him. They that would not come to him to be saved must depart from him to be damned. To depart from Christ is the very hell of hell. It is the foundation of all the misery of the damned, to be cut off from all hope of benefit from Christ and his mediation. Those that go no further in Christ's service than a bare profession, he does not accept, nor will he own them in the great day. See from what a height of hope men may fall into the depth of misery, how they may go to hell by the gates of heaven. This should be an awakening word to all Christians. If a preacher, one that cast out devils and wrought miracles, be disowned of Christ for working iniquity, what will become of us if we be found such? And if we be such, we shall certainly be found such. At God's bar, a profession of religion will not bear out any man in the practice and indulgence of sin. 
Therefore, let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from all iniquity.